your Bible lesson for Thursday, um, April 16th, and I just have a couple of little um, sections to read you. You know, in our book, it'll always have like a little, I call them a blurb, right, um, of some interesting information that will go along with our lesson. So I'm going to read you these two. They'll be pretty short, and then I want you to also do the word search on journal page 164. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Rain is absolutely necessary for sustaining life on earth. Without it, crops and forests wouldn't grow, and people and animals would soon die. God designed all living things to need water to survive, so he also created the water cycle to provide for his creation. The water cycle <clears throat> sorry, constantly moves our water from oceans to land and back again. The sun heats the surface of the lakes and oceans and evaporates the water which then rises into the air as water vapor, a gaseous state. The water vapor ascends on a rising air current into the atmosphere, where cooler temperatures allow the vapor to condense into clouds. As strong winds move the clouds around the world, the water eventually falls back to the earth as rain or snow. Then the rain or melted snow travels along rivers and streams back to the ocean to start the cycle all over again. Ultimately, since God created the water cycle and sustains it, he is responsible for where, how, and whom the rain falls. Matthew 5.45 says that our Father in heaven makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Any time it rains or snows, God is making it happen, giving water to the earth so that we may live. It's comforting to know that all our, our all-powerful creator is always watching over us, ready and able to provide everything we need. Okay, and then the next one is, pop, it's called popping off about corn. Okay. What are you doing? Here you go. Okay, so popping off about corn. Have you ever bitten into a freshly cooked ear of corn? You're shaking my camera, please. Just please don't touch the chair. Okay. Popping off about corn. Have you ever bitten into a freshly cooked ear of corn, drizzled with butter and salt? It's one of the best parts of summer. But do you know how important corn is around the world? Each year, more corn is grown worldwide than either rice or wheat. About 800 million metric tons of corn. The United States grows twice as much corn as any other country in the world. In fact, corn has been growing in North and South America since before Columbus even arrived. Archaeologists have even found ears of corns in the America that are over 5,000 years old. Corn is popular because there are so many things you can do with it. Try thinking of all the ways corn can be prepared, like cornmeal mush, grits, cornbread, popcorn. Corn can also be made into cooking oil, corn syrup, corn starch to thicken sauces. Corn is also used to feed farm animals, including cows, pigs, and chickens. Now people are even finding ways to use corn instead of gasoline to power their cars. So why don't you try growing corn yourself? This experiment can take several weeks, so be prepared to be patient. But I thought this one would be a really fun one for you to read and try into Marco Polo if you want to give it a go. Be sure and let me know. So... What you need is corn seeds, which you can get at a local supply store like Ace, okay, or Murdoch's, um, a plastic sandwich bag, and paper towels. So dampen the paper towels and place them inside the bag. Put a few corn seeds inside too, making sure each seed is pointing down. The roots will grow out of the pointed end, not the flat end. Then seal the bag, place it in a sunny window, and wait for the seeds to sprout. Check each day that the towels are still damp. When the seeds have sprouted, you can even transplant them into a garden. From planting to harvest takes 55 to 95 days, depending on the variety of corn and to some extent the weather. Your corn is ready to harvest when the kernels are soft and plump and their juice is milky. So this is the perfect time to start a seed. And um, of course, it would be fun to do this at school together and then take them home and plant them in our gardens. But even if you don't have a garden, you can use a pot like your mom um, would put flowers in okay um, so I encourage you to try this um, to get some 
corn seeds and to put them in your window you can tape them on keep the paper towels damp um, and keep and so that they keep moist and then once they start sprouting um, you can replant them in a little pot a big pot a garden um, and I love to see our corn plants grow I actually did this a couple years ago and I got two ears of corn so not a whole lot of corn but it was really fun to grow corn and to get to eat the corn that I grew so I encourage you to do that it would be really fun and if you have a place out even on your front porch patio you can grow a stalk of corn okay so now you can do your word search on journal uh, page 154